and I landed in Pittsburgh about seven years ago as a permanent resident. And I love the art scene out here. I love the people. Um, the food has made me fat, and I enjoy it out here. It's great. <laughs> Uh, hi, I am Natik Jalil. I am a visual artist who focuses on watercolors, acrylics, and oils, and multimedia in general. Uh, I am also the founder of the Colored Section Black Artist Collective, and I am a muralist. Uh, I'm originally from Montgomery, Alabama, although I've lived all over the country, wherever my art has taken me. There was a time when I wanted my art to just be pretty. And um, that actually got me some success. But as time went along, I really wanted my art to be more than just a pretty picture. I wanted it to be something. I wanted it to be about something. And so as I searched for what my mission for my art would be, uh, a lot of stuff started happening all at once. Um, Mike Brown was killed, uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, and a bunch of different police killings started happening. Um, there was you know, there was the birth of the Black Lives Matter movement. There was um, a bunch of talk um, about equity um, in the arts and stuff like that that started happening all around the country and um, in particular in Pittsburgh. Even some older institutions like GPAC started re-examining, you know, um, in different ways that things could become more equitable. And so I decided that's the direction that I wanted to go. Um, what can I do to use my platform to bring, to help to bring about equity in the arts and in other sectors of life? I started to work on these paintings that um, were layered and nuanced in the same way that our current uh, landscape is, you know, where usually it would have been just the, the female figure, maybe a couple of different uh, organic things. I decided that I, um, there were other things I wanted to put in there. Uh, I use words, I use dates, I use uh, things like symbolism, like this um, pendulum um, and, the, and the power sign. Uh, the power sign is featured very prominently in my work. Um, and that to me, that says that there's something that needs to be reset because that power button is also a reset button on a lot of devices. Um, and it also is about the power that we all have uh, that we don't always use. Um, you can tell a lot about a person's situation through the faces that they make consciously and unconsciously. And when I lived in New York City for a while, uh, I was able to get a lot of practice um, drawing on the trains, um, going back and forth between the Bronx and Manhattan. Um, nobody ever looked at each other. And so I would sketch the people across from me and, you know, the train would have its bumps and its um, turns and stuff. And over time, I kind of knew where it was going to happen. It became a very organic thing because, you know, if the train pulled my hand this way, it's in there now. It, the face is an easy way to do it, to tell a story. And so uh, for me, that's what it became. And over time, uh, it became easier to choose which parts of the face I wanted to, to um, focus on and which colors I wanted to use. Cause sometimes I, you know, don't want to just use the natural colors. I want to throw in purples and pinks and stuff, you know? And so the colors I've been using the face is, is to set a mood to tell the story. So I've been thinking a lot about the future. Um, as you know, like at one point there was that billboard that said there were black people in the future. And um, that got me a lot, thinking a lot about how, about a bunch of different things like, in sci-fi, you know, me being a, a sci-fi nerd and all of that, um, there were more aliens than there were black people in a lot of it. And whenever there was a black black person in, in um, online forums and stuff, people were in an uproar, like, what are you trying to do to, to space, you know? <laughs> and so uh, I was thinking about, yeah, we're going to be there. We've been there throughout the whole past. We're going to be here in the future, too. And I started to think about what does that look like? with us being in the future. And so this is actually a new series I started um, called the 3020. 
um, in 2020, the world changed. And so I started to think what it's going to be like in 3020. And so my vision of it is that things kind of went back while at the same time moving forward. Um, there's still technology involved. I uh, put a uh, stylized um, power symbol here. Um, and there's like, I use um, a lot of things that you'll find in, um, in techware and things of that nature. Um, but I also put in very traditional um, design motifs uh, from Africa, from the African-American experience. We have struggled for equality for a long time now. Like in the future, have we accomplished that? completely you know um if if so then uh what are the challenges of the day in the future you know and so this is kind of um what i wanted to bring about the strength the resilience the happiness the everything that's going to be in the future and i chose afro um, afrofuturism as my style to tell it